Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast. And I have a question to start this podcast. Where were you on the night of August 31st, 1997? Now, that night was the, the night we lost the very ever-beautiful and compassionate Princess Diana in a horrible accident in Paris. I remember that night vividly, and so does today's podcast guest, because he has recently released a beautiful song as a tribute to the beautiful lady known as Diana. He joins me all the way from Sydney, Australia. Will you please welcome the star of Star Witness, Andrew Starr. Andrew, welcome aboard. Hey. What an intro. Thank you, Rick. And it's an absolute pleasure to be with you. So uh, thanks very much for inviting me. I was just kidding him as we before we got started here as far as he's actually it's actually tomorrow uh, where he is. And uh, so how's our day look, uh, Andrew? What's uh, can you give us a weather uh, update uh, in Sydney right now? <laughs> well, I'd love to swing the screen around. It is absolutely uh, bluebird sky outside. There's not a cloud. It's around uh, 85 degrees, 90 degrees are your temperatures. We've just had a burst of warm weather coming out of our winter awesome. or out of our spring. We're yes. in spring, uh-huh. fall, I think you call it. And uh, it's beautiful here. Today. Awesome. Very, very good. So everyone, you should have a beautiful day as according to uh, Andrew right there. Now, I know exactly where I was uh, on the night of uh, August the 31st, 1997. Where were you when you heard the news of the passing of uh, Princess Diana? I was at home. It was actually late morning on a Sunday uh, on the 31st, and I was at home. We had the TV on, and the news came on that there had been uh, an accident involving Princess Diana and, and Dodie, and that both were injured, and that's all they said. And, of course, you know, we were pretty taken aback, I think is the right word. Mm, yeah, exactly. And within an hour or an hour and a half, uh, the same uh, news presenter came back and said she had some awful news. And even now, just thinking about that, it was uh, it was just devastating. Absolutely. It really, it really was. She was just loved by everybody. And... I absolutely loved her. I mean, it was just one of those most beautiful things. It was like she was my age, and, you know, it was just seeing this beautiful woman get married to Prince Charles and become a, a spokesperson for so many things that she did. She was a spokesperson for peace, and she was just an absolutely wonderful lady, and uh, and we miss her. And I know exactly where I was because I had just gotten off the radio that Saturday evening, and my late wife, I had to take her to the emergency room. She had a blood clot in her thigh. And I always say it was the night that we lost a princess and I almost lost my queen. And luckily, my queen oh. lived for another 21 years. She, she died uh, back in 2018 uh, after a 21-year stint with lupus. That's what was actually what caused the blood clot and everything. But uh, oh, So I know exactly where, where she was. What is the backstory that prompted you to compose such a beautiful song that, uh, that salutes uh, Princess Diana's passing and her life? Well, well, well let me first by, uh, start by saying, uh, you know, my... Uh, Absolute condolences and sympathies to you, Rick, to hear that story about your beautiful wife. Um, I recently lost mine as well. Um, but anyway, that's another story. So so going back to the inspiration for the song, so what, what happened uh, that afternoon was uh, it was just a, a kind of a state of disbelief, and I'm sure everybody felt the same way. And uh, I ended up just going out to my studio uh, and, you know, picked up the guitar and I just started fiddling away with some chords and not really anything in mind. And then I, I found this little chord progression and and, and it just seemed to, um, uh, let's just say, uh, sympathise with the situation. It was uh, just these kind of eerie chords and, and it led to a little riff and then uh, a chord progression and, and then some words came out. And really, one thing led to another. And um, look, the song just literally, it, it just literally fell out of me. And and within a, the space of a few hours, I had I had 95% of the song. It was just written then, then and there. 
Wow, that's absolutely amazing how it all comes together. Who else uh, helped you on this? Uh, it sounds like you were a one-man show to put this all together. I did it all myself. Oh, good Lord, that is incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Uh, I actually did a demo over the next couple of days, and and the demo was finished by the Thursday before the funeral. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, of course, we, we witnessed the funeral and we saw Elton get up so stoically and, and sing his reworked version of Candle in the Wind. I know, and of, of course, fabulous. in my mind, I'm, I was kind of wishing my song could have been uh, out there at that point because it was, it was just so full of emotion. But um, I, I went on to demo it a number of times, Rick, over the, the ensuing years. But the most recent version I did in my own home studio, and that was done uh, a year or two ago, to be fair, and uh, I put it up on YouTube, and, uh, yeah, it's been very popular. I've been very happy to, you know. Yeah, popular yeah. is an understatement. Over 300,000 views on YouTube. That's that's incredible right there. Well, it is, and I think it's a testament to Princess Diana. Mm-hmm because people absolutely adored her, and they still do. And, and, and I see a lot of posts on various uh, Princess Diana fan pages, mm-hmm. and, and, and people are still living with her in the moment and cherishing her, as do I, and, uh, and I think that maybe is, is why it's become a bit popular. All right, very good. We're going to play that right now. I want you to listen to this beautiful song. It is absolutely amazing. Here's Andrew Starr and Star Witness with Diana. When you came, you were a listening bird with the shiners wrapped in sweetness. When you came, you were a glistening bird like the sunlight on a waterfall There you were looking dignified Stiffened by a royal tie around you That's how we found you The princess of smiles So you took your life above the tree by a friendly breeze into our backyard and the years that you lived just there We followed every heartbeat, every mama, every tear you shed And there you stood looking dignified Stiffened by this royal tie around you It had surrounded Grace the covers of magazines across the globe But the lenses grew large and long Invading every private moment that you'd planned on But they stood looking mystified Angered by these prying eyes around
magnificent tribute to Princess Diana by Star Witness featuring today's podcast guest, Andrew Starr. By the way, I've included the link to the video down in the show notes. If you want to check it out, you're going to love it and add to the growing more than 300,000 views on YouTube. And before we continue, I'd like to say thank you so much for tuning into the Someone You Should Know podcast. We're heard on the web at someoneyoushouldknowpodcast.com. There you'll find recent news, our archive of past episodes, and a whole lot more. And if you're on that site, on the very first page, at the very bottom, you get a chance to leave a review. Let us know how we're doing. Now, I just found out that we're heard now in 78 countries, and we're so blessed to reach so many cities around the world. And since our guest is from Australia, we'll salute the cities that are actually listening to us down in Australia. Brisbane, also uh, Melbourne, uh, Perth, and Sydney. Thanks so much for tuning in. The Someone You Should Know podcast heard wherever Quality streaming audio is available. And now back to our podcast guest, Andrew Starr of Star Witness. Now, you're the second podcast guest that I've got from Australia. Earlier this year, we had a, a I don't know, countryman, country, countryman, country person, Lily Grace, who is like 17 years old, and she's taken uh, this country by storm. What's the Australian music scene like? Well, that's a that's an interesting question. Um I'm probably not best qualified to tell you that. If, <laughs> if you'd asked me 20 years ago, I could tell you everything. But <laughs> um, ironically, I, I went to a gig. We've got a number of uh, what I would describe as much-loved bands and artists down here in Australia. So we've got a, a dearth of um, great players with great memories and great songs, and I happen to see the Hoodoo Gurus. Oh, I know them who, well. I know them. I know them. I used to play them when I was on the radio. The Hoodoo Gurus, yes, sir. <laughs> well, they just did a, a gig down here at uh, Manly Barracks, right down here at Manly Beach. Uh-huh. You might have heard of in Sydney, and they absolutely blew the crowd away. Awesome. They're forty years into their careers. Wow. And uh, they were amazing, but we've we've also got acts I, I saw recently, Midnight Oil. Yep, I know them from eighty eight, eighty eight. Yeah, and they, they, these yeah. guys, Rick, are still at the top of their game. Wow. And uh, but but to answer your question, there's a lot of talent down here in Australia. A lot of young folk, you know, as you would well know. And mm-hmm. you've interviewed, was it uh, Lily? Did you say? Yeah, Lily Grace. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Lily Grace. I'll have to look her up. Um, I'm sure she's the future of Australian music. Yeah, she's she's all over Instagram, so just look for her. She's uh, releasing uh, lots and lots of new music. Now, I read that you were deeply influenced by the Beatles, so much so that you recently released a very cool Calypso version of Hey Jude. What's the story on this? Well, Rick, um, I have been asked this question a couple of times. I've got to be careful because I am a diehard Beatles fan, <laughs> and 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 as such... Venturing into doing a cover version of a Beatles song is is, is fraught with danger. Mm-hmm. But the way this song came about, uh, it was not pre-planned. I was working on an original piece. It had a certain beat to it, and I played a, uh, my lyrics over that. Then I muted the lyrics and just had the rhythm section going and was just strumming on the guitar and started singing, Hey Jude, I don't even know why. And at the end, uh, at the end of it, I thought, well, that was interesting. I recorded a version of it. I played it back. I kind of thought there was something there. I left it for a few weeks, but I was always going to come back, came back, and then found maybe I could uh, make this a bit calypso So what do I need to do? And so I started adding, you know, marimbas and a horn section and so on and so forth. And before I know it, uh, sorry, before I knew it, I realized I had to finish the song. So that's what happened. And then I played it to a couple of people and they went, wow, you know, that's <laughs> that's not what we were expecting. So, um, yeah, and of all songs, Hey Jude, I mean, I don't know that I, I would never have picked that as a cover song to do. <laughs> I would have picked something else. But that's what happened. It was just purely by chance. Let's listen to it. Here's Andrew Starr of Star Witness and his take on the Beatles' Hey Jude right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Hey Jude. Don't make it bad Take a sad song And make it better Remember To let her into your heart Then you can start To make it better Hey Jude afraid You were made to go out and get her The minute you let her under your 
of Hey Jude with a little Calypso feel from Star Witness featuring Andrew Starr. You were just talking about being a a Beatles fan. My wife Leslie and I are going on a trip to England next year. It's the specific Beatles tour. 
to hit uh, the hot spots of uh, you know, all, all about their, their haunts in London, all their ha- haunts in Liverpool, and it's dedicated to the Beatles. We're going to go to the Cavern Club. We're going to go see where uh, where John's mom lived and, uh, and uh, Paul's mom lived. And the guy that orchestrated this whole thing is a dear friend of ours named Chad Clifford, and he's with a band called the Craw Puppies. And a couple times a year, he gets together with another band, and they form the Mega Beatles, and they kick out like 60 Beatles songs in an evening, and it is, uh, it's just wonderful. So we're looking forward to doing that next August. I'm going to have to tell you all about that, and maybe maybe, maybe you can join us. I don't know. <laughs> uh, look, I would love that. And, and uh, look, I have done a fair bit of uh, checking stuff out of the Beatles in London and Liverpool, and I heard you mentioned uh, some childhood homes there. Mm-hmm. They are the absolute highlight, Rick. So it's John's childhood home, mm-hmm. Mendips. It's called Mendips. Mendips, okay. You must go there. It's, it's owned by the um, British Trust, I think, now. Yoko mm-hmm. bought that house maybe 10 or 15 years ago, and she donated it. And the other one, of course, is Paul's home in Fourthland Road. That's also owned by the Trust. So they are two absolute highlights. Awesome, awesome. But I'll, I'll be looking out for you on the crossing. All right, very good. Yes, exactly. Right there at Abbey Road, real good. Now, yeah. <laughs> now you've been performing since the 70s. You've had your share of load-ins and load-outs. And this next feature is called Tales from the Road. These are those infamous road stories where things didn't go as planned. You know, you get to a gig and you realize, uh-oh, it's the wrong date. Or uh, you're at the wrong venue. Or you plug in and the fuse blows. Or uh, your truck breaks down or something like that. You've had a couple. Just think of your spinal tap moment. What would you say would be your spinal tap moment? <laughs> Look, you have you have touched on a, a what I would describe as a raw nerve here, Rick. Uh, oh no! <laughs> there are uh, honestly, I'm pretty self contained in most most of my gigs, even if it's with a band or a duo. Uh-huh. But there's always that trepidation that if you leave one cable behind, you can potentially blow the whole gig. Um, I fortunately haven't succumbed to that one, although I did recently do a gig and I did forget a lead, but I called upon my son who uh, drove back home and got the lead. So <laughs> I, I don't know that I've got a specific a specific one. What, what I can tell you is uh, um, I did do a gig some years ago and uh, it's probably not the best story, but uh, my wife's not here to hear it anymore. And she she doesn't like me ribbing her about it, but she um, she was performing with me at a gig. Oh, okay. and in the lead up, she had celebrated a friend's thirtieth birthday. Mm-hmm. This is on a Saturday afternoon, and she came home. And let's just say, Rick, she was a little worse for wear. Oh, no. okay. Now this was extremely rare uh-huh. for my wife. Anyway. She was at a point where, let's just say, she couldn't even help me load in and all the rest of that. (laughs) And I was just, and this was a five-star hotel gig. Oh, jeez. So I guess this is my uh, my moment. Uh, Anyway, I was just doing my best to load in and sort of keep her on the straight and narrow. The good news is when it came time to perform, she did the best performance of all time. Oh, you're kidding. Wonderful. It was it was absolutely her best performance. Mm-hmm. So she just came good, you know. It was one of those things. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, I know she's probably looking down as my no my my late wife's looking down and saying, you know something? Thanks for honoring me. Thank you for thank you so much. So now besides oh, sure. being a talented musician, this guy and I share something that I've done for forty four years. You're also on the radio. You have two captivating weekly shows, Surfside Breakfast, and also Instant Karma Radio Show. You gotta tell me about these and what it's like being a radio personality. <laughs> well I, I, I'm not quite in your league, I'd have to say, Rick. No, not by any stretch, but uh the Surfside Breakfast Show is uh emanates from Radio Northern Beaches mm-hmm. and the Northern Beaches of Sydney. And I'm based uh on the beaches here and I've been running that program for around eighteen months. And it's music for breakfast, Rick. So it's it's focused <laughs> totally on music, and I do kind of a different theme each week. Okay. Um, my overriding theme is we give the hits a miss. Oh, all right. So I'm playing more album tracks. The deeper cuts, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's artists you know but songs you may not. 
So it's very familiar for people. So that's sort of one of my main themes. I like and, that. Uh, I like that concept very well. Okay, good. Yeah, and, well, that, thank you. Uh, and, and that shows also on, uh, like yours is on Spotify, Surfside Breakfast. But the other program and where I really got my start was um, Instant Karma, Songs of the Beatles and Their Solo Careers. Mm -hmm. And it was important to add the solo careers because that is like another uh, another generation of Absolutely. music. Absolutely, yes. So I play about a dozen Beatles songs, then I play one solo song from each of John, Paul, George and Ringo, mm -hmm. and we play a buried treasure, which is something uh, in the depths of one of the albums. Awesome. Very good. I love hearing those. And, and how long have you been doing that show? Well, we're in our 10th year. 10th year. Very good. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Did, yeah. you ha did you have a love affair with uh, with being on the radio? I mean, was, I mean I've mean, i wanted to do that since I was... There's a, there's a photo I posted on Facebook of me, probably about three years old, sitting on a potty chair with a spindle of 45. So I knew I was going to be in radio uh, all my life. And when did you want to uh, hop on the radio? Well, that's, that's a great question. I, uh, m my earliest memories were, were listening to the radio, of course, and that's where I got my love of the Beatles. And, and I got a couple of Beatles singles when I was growing up. And so we were listening to the radio all the time. And there were a lot of great personalities down here in Australia. And But even people like Casey Kasem, we used to get his show uh, in the early yeah, 70s. So, you know, we, we had this sort of grounding in radio. And it wasn't really until oh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago I really sort of thought I should try and do something on community radio because we do have quite a number of stations mm -hmm. here. And, um, yeah, look, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. I, I've, I've actually done a breakfast show with a colleague named Guy and we did a satirical program for about three years and he's very funny. I just played the straight guy. Mm -hmm. He was the funny guy. So, um, yeah, look, I really love, like you, I love I love the radio. But you've got a voice for radio and you've got a face for TV. <laughs> I never did the TV. I was always uh, told, you know, I always had a great face for radio. And uh, it was the, f the phrase, uh, uh, radio keeping ugly people employed for over 100 years or something like that. Oh, no way, no way. <laughs> okay, let's, how about some links to your social media? What social medias are you on? Okay, well, yes, I am on Facebook. Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So instant instant karma sounds. Okay. S O U N D S. You'll find us, and of course, Surfside Breakfast Radio Show. Oh. You'll find both those on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put those down in the link so you don't miss out on the opportunity. Plus, you got a website too. What's your website? Yeah, the website for my original music is starwitness.com. And of course, it's S T A double -R, R, and maybe now you've worked out why. Uh huh. <laughs> Get the guy on the drums. <laughs> <laughs> what about final thoughts? Anything else we should know about Andrew Starr and Star Witness? Um, well, look, I'm I'm about to do my first ever showcase of original songs, and uh, this has kind of been a long time coming, Rick. But um, a lot of my songs are very personal songs. I'm doing a little tour. It's called The Art of Love. Wow. And, and most of my music has, has got a love theme in there somewhere. And, of course, a lot of songs influenced by my wife, but also through other experiences. So it's a pretty, as they say, raw type of exposure. And I've got a showcase coming up on the 6th of October, um, which might be a couple of days ago for the podcast, but that's okay. Um, I'll look forward to telling you how it goes. It's on in, uh, in the center of Sydney. Awesome. Very good. All right. Now, the last song we're going to feature is called Ola Bilgola. Now, Bilgola is a beach, right? Absolutely correct. You've done your homework there, Rick. I had to I look it up. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I had to look it up myself. Yeah, tell us, uh, tell well, us about this song. Well, well thank you for asking. I, I, I actually moved, uh, my wife and I moved down here to Bilgola, about three years ago. And and when when I got here, I had this tiny little cupboard where I could put my studio stuff, and I literally mean a cupboard. It was like three metres by 1.5 metres. <laughs> so what's that, 10 feet by f five feet? Ridiculous. Anyway, I just wanted to write a song about Bill Gola because we kind of grew up on the beaches down here and Bill Gola was where we went to. Now I'm living here. I want to write something about Bill Gola. But I wanted something 
to rhyme with Bill Gola. So I'm scratching my head going, well, what rhymes with Bill Gola? What rhymes? Um, uh, I know, hola. <laughs> and that's a very beachy thing to say. So hola, hello, Bill Gola. And the song needed to be a sort of a, what we call down here surf rock. I don't know. Yeah, I think you have rock. that genre. Yep. Oh, yes, of course, yes. And uh, so surf rock, so I... I I'd never written a surf rock song, Rick, so I had to try and work out how to do that, and I didn't know. And the whole thing came together in this tiny little cupboard. It was the first song I wrote down here, and uh, hopefully it captures a little bit of that beach feel. You know, you're talking about that size of that little studio. I've been in studios that small. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. I kid you not. Well, well, I'll tell you one thing. I thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast here. I hope you had a good time. Oh, absolutely, Rick. It was an absolute pleasure. I'm, I'm really chuffed and delighted that you invited me. Thank you so much. Driving to the coast in my car. sand wanna see surf just to be in touch for all it's worth
Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time, and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.